Hi, I'd just like to take a few minutes to talk to you about workflow, passing information and tasks from one person to another in an institution where they are developing MOOCs in a low cost fashion. In a way, this is a proposed model of a workflow with a slight variation that I'm going to put to you. There are probably many ways you can do the workflow even when it's brought down to a simple way. But we look at one and you can decide yourself how this is applicable to your own situation. So I'm going to give you an overview of the workflow. Then we're going to look at project control and communication between members in a project. And then we're going to drill down a little bit into the workflow, more specifically into the instructional design part of the task and to, into the production of content and assembly of the MOOC on the platform. OK. This is an overview of a proposed workflow. If we were to look at it here, there are certain areas. This area here on the left is more to do with the instructional design process where we need to have training for the subject matter expertise. We need to go through the design and we have some quality assurance built into, the, into this process. Then the subject matter expert starts working on content and is passing content on to perhaps an e-learning technology. So we have the production and the e-learning technology does a certain amount of editing and assembly and then we have quality assurance built into this here. Then we move to the delivery phase of the MOOC where the MOOC is delivered to learners and the subject matter expert should be involved in this process as well because there will be feedback coming back here as well. And that, of course, will be part of the quality assurance uh, procedure as well. So project control and communication. How do we make sure we keep the project on target and how do we organize communication between people? Well, one way of doing this, I mean, regular email is fine, but those messages, it can be hard to track them later. So we might just simply use a shared spreadsheet. Um, the outputs would be listed on this with the person responsible and the dates. Now, you could substitute a fairly light project management system. There are a lot of web-based project management systems available, and they're quite good, but perhaps a spreadsheet would be fine. Everybody would know the status of tasks at any particular time. Um, that could be done via Dropboxes, that the shared documents are always in a Dropbox or a shared folder somewhere where everybody can get access to the original and people aren't working with different versions of the documents. Another thing is we may need certain naming conventions. Those Dropboxes can be used for if videos or other documents are produced, contents are produced, they are dropped into a folder of a particular name and the documents themselves have particular names so that the next person in line can recognize what they're for. And this will help to avoid errors. Okay, let's look at this part of the workflow that was on the left of my original um, diagram, which is to do with the instructional design. Let's say, say a few things about this. It's the instructional designer and the subject matter expert that are involved in this part of the process. The training would be done. The instructional designer will bring the subject matter expert through training. Probably not one-to-one -one training for trying to cut costs. There may be pre-recorded training. But one thing the instructional designer has to do is has to ensure that the subject matter expert has gained that limited number of skills that's, that they're being trained in. So they do need to check that it's done, no matter how the training is done. The instructional designer will also work on the design of the content or the design of the course and to some extent the specification of the content and this will be certified as having been completed this is part of the quality assurance so a learning strategy will emerge out of this a list of objects to be developed which once they have the person who and the date to be developed when we have a project plan 
okay it would probably be advisable that the subject matter expert at this point develops some sample content and passes it back to the instructional designer so that they as part of checking that they are competent and that could be the part of the competency checking for training okay production of content and assembly of content this is the part on the right hand side of the diagram where the subject matter expert and the learning technologist might be involved okay this consists of content creation the the subject matter expert will work on their own to create content using the templates uh, as trained by the instructional designer this could be simple text it could be simple videos maybe not fully completed with errors in them but videos they would make videos and quizzes and other items uh, built according to the templates and then passed on to the e-learning technologist probably using maybe some shared storage dropped it in using the proper file naming system the e-learning technology can just check these and they may be uh, an initial check that requires them to go back to the subject matter expert if there's anything wrong with them and if they're acceptable will then do any editing or assembly that needs to be done before loading to the platform now let's have a look at a sample lean workflow just for video production we'll drill down into video production and a lot of this could be applicable for other areas as well so if I can get my pointer here and we'll just go over this diagram just say the subject matter expert records a video maybe optimal size of about seven minutes there may be errors in it hopefully not uh, and they save it in a Dropbox now this is a little thing that programmers use to say we will do this three times so if we haven't done it three times yet we will go back and do another video save it in the Dropbox and do back and do another video and save it in the Dropbox the editor will pick these up or the e-learning technologist acting as an editor will pick this up and say well which of these three is the best one okay so it's very quick to record it three times then there may still be some errors in the best one possibly not but if they find some errors they may be able to find a, a better section in the other two videos and apply those edits if this is then acceptable we can the editor could go on and process this publish it and link to it from the platform in other words put it up on the platform do the course assembly now if after having done three we still don't have enough to have an acceptable video they can go back to the subject matter expert with advice and on, on, on how to improve the production of their video so the e-learning technologies just would have a certain amount of knowledge about how to produce a good video including presentation skills and powerpoint skills so there's a sample lean workflow could we improve on this well I did present this to a colleague recently and they suggested a better approach and this is an alternative approach here let's have a look there record a minute target is a seven minutes but rather than rather than recorded several times every time that the subject matter expert the lecturer perceives that they've made a mistake in a video they just say cut that or error cut that maybe leaves a little space a quiet space which can be easily spotted by the editor and moves back possibly to the start of the slide would be a good part and starts to redo that slide or maybe even a shorter section of the slide was quite long so they would do that going back over their errors and repeating themselves as they saw fit if they made mistakes so it would end up the raw video would be slightly longer and they would save that in the Dropbox. Now, the editor or e-learning technology would look at this, listen through it and say, well, is there enough to work with here? Can I fix this video? Have they corrected the mistakes well enough? And if not, go back and talk to the subject matter expert to see about improving it. So we have a certain quality check built in there. Otherwise, if it is acceptable, they can move on here and remove the errors apply any other edits and just publish so this is a simpler way of doing it 
Okay, so those are some suggestions about how you might quickly produce video and possibly have similar workflows, if not simpler workflows, for other types of content. Thanks for listening. I hope you found it useful.